Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Head there, say hi. We'll say hi back, or you can suggest something in our DMs. Um, find us on YouTube again, vlogging channel Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to this video. Let me just check for the title. I'm going to be reacting to why there is Bible, Torah before Quran. Dubai question and answer. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah grant you peace in this life and the hereafter, inshaAllah. My question, well, this is for someone whose faith has actually weakened. If we are required to be Muslims and the Quran is the final book to be followed by the people, why is there a Bible and Torah before Quran? I mean, we understand that the prophets Musa and Isa alayhim salam were also Muslims, but what is the reasoning behind the Bible coming first and then the Torah and then the Quran? Also, I have a question here for a young girl standing, since this is the last question she asked me to ask it. Should we say salam alaikum to a stranger who we don't know or who isn't a Muslim, and why? Okay, my sister, the first part of the question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the decider. He chooses and he chose what to do. So he decided to send messengers to various nations. Some of them were given scripture. Some of them had the previous scripture with them to teach it. And they were sent to different places and different parts and different nations. But he kept one messenger, the highest of them all, with the Quran. And that is the revelation we have in our midst as a message for entire humanity, not just for one specific place. And he kept it for the end, for the last, for the end. We happen to be in this time where the others have all come. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also come. So because we came just after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's advent, we have to have followed him and we have to adopt this Quran in order for us to succeed. But if you take a look at the tenets of belief, you will come to realize that we also accept the previous scriptures as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadly, they are lost and no longer in their original form. So the discrepancies that exist when it comes to those books do not exist when it comes to the Quran. This is one of the ways that Allah is telling us, look, this is the book that I would like for you here and now. And as you know, something known as the Sharia, which means the laws, the, the rules and regulations governing how you will live and so on. It changes with the changing of time, but belief has never changed. We believe Allah is one. We believe in the messengers, in the books, in the last day. We believe good and bad comes from the almighty fate and so on. We believe that there is a day of reckoning and what have you. All that will not change and has not changed. But what does change some of the rules and regulations of what is permissible and prohibited. So that came with the various messengers. With Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger and the final message, it is valid up to the end of time. And this is why we say, this is what we will adopt, although in a nutshell, we do agree with all the previous scriptures and this is a completion of it. Like the Quran says, we have sent you these books and the Quran as a completion of it. This is why the late Ahmed Didat, may Allah grant him Jannah, he used to always say, the Quran, the final testament. You have the Old Testament, you have the New Testament. One could say, well, why did the new one have to come in if the old one was there? And one can ask so many questions. We have the final testament, my sisters. Then it comes to the issue of greeting. We greet whomsoever we come across with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that is the greeting of Islam. And yes, if there is a stranger that is there, uh, if there is a need for you to greet them, you may do so. For example, say, and I give you this example, if I'm moving with uh, my own women and so on, there is no need for them to greet a strange man, not at all. But I would do the greeting. And if there were women with him, with the person that I was greeting, then they will do the greeting to them. We also need to know that in Islam, one greeting can suffice for a group sometimes. If we are moving in a group and one of the brothers happened to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to another group, and then the others say, Wa alaikum as-salam, it's good enough. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
to grant us an understanding. Uh, Move to Mank is actually another one of my faves and I enjoyed watching this. Um, and I love the way he explains this. I find myself asking why I was so fond of bringing other religions down, you know. If this is where if that was the genesis this came after and then this you believe is the last um, testament or last message then at least seek to it that you don't insult everything about that religion pick what you relate with pick what's in relation with what you're practicing now and see what you can do with it because we must be some sort of I, I don't know if it's this delusion that we live or what we need to respect other religions. Today you disrespect this, disrespect what they practice. You find it's actually in your religion. Then what? Then what after disrespecting them? Find all those common things in all these other religions and then see where that takes you. See how that relates to what you're practicing. See how that can influence you. And honestly, I really, really loved how he explained it that could have been the first thing that could have been the second thing and now this is the final message concerning um concerning you don't have to identify yourself as i belong to this or this to say okay i believe in this just be aware enough that there's some truth to any everything even though um there's um scriptures have changed even though scriptures have changed many things have changed over time it's really really up to you and your keenness although when he says uh maybe these all these other religions don't have books in the original text what exactly does he mean because someone out there is saying but the quran has 37 versions and this was unpicked by so and so to make the final version that's been widely used by everyone. The Bible has been rewritten by different people. The Torah, I'm not sure. So what makes something original? Because as far as many of us are concerned, original is the first, first piece of work that you put out there. So if I've written something, publish it. That's my original work. Should someone decide to do something else with it, it won't be considered original, you know. So I'd love for someone to uh, explain that to me. And then concerning the greeting, I don't know about that. But many times, many people have walked past me and they've actually said these words to me. Although I don't know how to respond though. I really don't know how to respond. And um, they just greet I guess to be nice and you know that makes someone's day I don't know if it's allowed to say hi because the way the example he gave he says if he's working with women he can say hi to the man or the other way around anyway I don't know otherwise many people have said hi and always appreciated it I thought it was very kind of them to actually say hi and I, I really don't know so please explain to me do you only say hi to men or do you only say hi to women if it's women to women man to man what exactly happens with this greeting so yeah if there's anything you want me to react to let me know by dropping the name or the link down below i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video